Welcome everybody and thanks for joining us today. My name is Taisha and I'm the 3D Technology Evangelist at the Esri R&D Centre in Zurich, working mainly with City Engine and our XR products. I'm joined today by Pascal Müller, who's the Director of the R&D Centre in Zurich and the creator of City Engine. Let's kick this off by taking a quick look at our most recent highlight reel. What you see here is our get map data functionality, where essentially you can create cities in minutes. Our powerful procedural modeling tools make creating and iterating through design ideas simple. Our drawing tools make design processes intuitive and easy. Street design is quick and efficient. And all of our different export options and plugins can really help to bring your cities to life. Now let's take a look at what you can actually expect over the next couple of days in our virtual booth. So day one, that's today, uh, we've got our introduction to City Engine and what's new sessions. Then day two, tomorrow, uh, we have an introduction to real-time workflows track, uh, where we also have a special guest presentation by Urban Studios. And day three is our VFX track, and we have three presentations there Common VFX workflows with City Engine, uh, creating the city of Sintra for Netflix's The Witcher, and our special presentation by VFX Studio Framestore. So lots of exciting content coming up over the next few days, and we're really looking forward to having you as part of this journey with us. If you would like any one-on-one uh, -on -one time with any of us at any point, then you can schedule a meeting either directly via the SIGGRAPH platform or by using this link here. So let's take a step back and I'll tell you a little bit about who we are, who's Esri. Uh, Esri is the global leader for geographic information systems, also known as GIS, ranging from digital map making solutions to geodatabase management applications for whole city administrations. And uh, Esri has an installed base of more than 1 million users in more than 350,000 organizations worldwide. And as part of Esri, there are many Esri R&D centers uh, located all around the globe, working on lots of industry leading products. And in the Esri R&D center in Zurich, uh, where we employ around 60 people, I think at the moment, um, we work on all things 3D. And one of those 3D products is ArcGIS City Engine, um, which is pretty much the cornerstone of our booth here today. 
So yeah, without further ado, uh, let's look at the question, why City Engine? So some of you might be asking yourself how you can use City Engine. Um, so let me try and explain that. It takes a lot of work if you want to model a city. And that's mainly because a city incorporates many things like buildings and facades and lights and windows, streets, street furniture, roofs, rooftops, etc., etc. And basically this could really easily become a very time consuming and tedious production task. So I'm going to try and break this down a little bit. So let's look, for example, at Redlands, which is a small town where the Esri headquarters are located about one hour east of Los Angeles. The population there is around 70,000 people, but it already has 26,000 buildings, or actually even more than 26,000 buildings. Another example here is Orlando, with a population of around a quarter million, and it already has over 100,000 buildings. Or the third biggest city in the US, which is Chicago, comprises over a million buildings with a population of around 3 million people. And so in total for the US, we're talking about well over 100 million buildings. So let's do a quick calculation to see how long it would take us if we were to manually model all of these buildings. So let's assume that we can model one building in around 15 minutes, give or take. Even then, you'd need to invest 6,500 hours to model a small town like Redlands. For Orlando, it would be 14 man years of work, or 27,500 hours. And then if you dare to model a city like Chicago, it's a whopping 300,000 hours, or 150 man years. So in other words, that can quickly escalate. And so let's say you somehow find the motivation and the 6,500 hours to model the city of Redlands. First of all, well done. I take my hat off to you. Um, but then to model Orlando, you would need a whole lot of coffee. And by the time you've modeled Chicago, it would have cost you an absolute fortune in coffee money. And so by the end of it all, I feel like this would be a pretty accurate representation of you. So that's why the solution here really is to use smart technology instead of tedious manual labor. So what you see on the diagram here is on the y-axis going up, you've got the total cost or hours, and on the x-axis across, you've got the amount of quality content or design. And so instead of having this more buildings equals more time correlation, we can actually break it with procedural technology where we first define rules and a library and things like that so that we can create these beautiful cities with thousands and thousands of buildings without adding all of that time. And this is where City Engine comes in. With City Engine, you can procedurally create cities by writing rules that define the parameters of the city. Your city can be based on real world data or it can be completely fictional. City Engine is a complete city modeling suite. Uh, you can create cities in a matter of minutes. You can make edits on the fly or perform analyses to create your believable procedural worlds. So on that note, I'd like to hand over to Pascal. Hello. This is a talk about City Engine and how it can be used in media and entertainment. My name is Pascal Müller. I'm the director of the R&D Center in Zurich of Esri Inc., which is a, the global uh, market leader in geographic information systems. And uh, I was also one of the co-authors of the original City Engine um, almost 20 years ago. So in this talk, we are going to um, focus on how City Engine can be used in film, TV, and game production. Um, City Engine, as you might know, is also used in architecture and urban design, urban planning a lot. And uh, but for that, we refer you to our website where we have much more other resources. So 
in this talk, I'm going to focus on basically the two things which CD Engine is really good at. One being creating city plans, layouting them, and the other being in the generation and distribution of city assets like buildings, uh, streets, um, street furniture, this kind of stuff. And then at the end, I'm going to talk a bit about um, pipeline integration, how CD Engine yeah, works with different pipelines, maybe real time or um, production rendering. I'm also um, going to uh, highlight new things which we developed um, during uh, yeah in the last year. So let's start with uh, city layouts. How to create a city layout? So basically, there are two things uh, which you can do with City Engine. One is you create a real city, or second, you create a imaginary city. And for creating a real city, you can use GIS data. So let's talk about this. Here is actually an example, a pretty um, good explan explanatory example of how City Engine can be used. So what you see here is the Hero 6, and the city is uh, called San Francisco, something. Um, and uh, it's based on real street data of San Francisco, and then the Disney generated buildings that are more kind of Japanese style on top. But you can see the enormous uh, amount of buildings, and this is real. Uh, data from San Francisco. However, what was interesting here was that the director at some point said that he wants to have the Terra more exaggerated. So this was one of these examples where it helps that you have a procedural pipeline because what they then did was basically yeah, they just exaggerated the Terra, regenerated the whole city, and it was basically no deal and changing such things in a whole city model um, at late time is yeah was is only possible if you have procedural content so here you actually see this is a frame from a making of of um of big hero 6 and you can see the exaggerated terror here in san francisco so how can this be done in city engine on the one hand you can import all kinds of JS data, um, there's many open data, but then we also have this neat functionality which you can see here called get map data. Here, as you can see, you search a place in the world, you select the extent you want to download, and then um, it downloads for you the streets, the parcels, and uh, and buildings. Buildings, of course, only um, they're only in low level of detail here, um, but for for bird view shots or for made paintings or just for previous, this is already really really great. But then of course you can dress the 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 city much more and add more stuff. So for example, the next example is the city of Zurich, uh, which um, where we also added more JS layers like trees and uh, and and road signs, etc. And this is really like this is generated in minutes with CD Engine. So, however, um, imaginary cities um, are uh, in entertainment, of course, very important, and um, therefore CD Engine gives you a neat tool set of um, of of functions to create streets, to create street networks, to edit them, to import, export, and mash up street networks, and uh, also to grow them procedurally. So here, again, <coughs> the example is um, Zootopia, and this actually is a really interesting one. It's a, obviously a completely Im imaginary city, and uh, everything here has been generated uh, uh, using the street network of uh, is based on the street network of uh, created in city engine and uh, it's actually here you see how they started to plan the different parts of the city then they used photoshop to create it uh, the terra 
Then here you see now the first test in CD Engine and how the street growth algorithms have been used. This is now the, the plaza part of of the of Zootopia of the city, and you can really see how they develop and design the the different parts. So and so you, you see there are five parts here, and the tundra town uh, is going to be the next. Here you see first the drawings of the designer, and then the how how in CD Engine these uh, these streets have been traced, and uh, and then here you see the resulting um, city grid. Here with some assets inserted. Here you see downtown again. Um, basically trying out the different things and then they added hero buildings uh, and you see it here all combined in CD Engine and uh, and then together with this uh, it really created this whole uh, city. It's a really really beautiful model and uh, and here yeah, this is again the shot where you can see. So CD Engine is a really really cool tool when you uh, want to create imaginary cities, um, but it's also another example which you're proud of is uh, is the Blade Runner, uh, the latest one, where you see, for example, these solar panels. Um, they have been um, distributed with City Engine. You can see the street networks, or here the soya farms, also uh, street networks. They also used um, actually in Blade Runner also. Um, GIS data for uh, the construction of Las Vegas. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting uh, that you can do both things, like real and imaginary cities. So once you have the layout, you need to put in models. And there, there are basically two approaches. One is uh, generating the geometry completely procedural. The other one is more like distributing, assembling the different parts. And uh, let's first talk about the procedure generation, which is the main thing which most uh, users are doing. Uh, so we have, uh, I think, over uh, 30 um, feature films which use CD Engine, and most of them actually really um, created um, geometries like here. I mean, this is an old example, but a very extreme one. Like, you can really see the procedural geometries and uh, of this science fiction city. But here you also see uh, from Justice League, um, you can see that also you can create modern cities. So this is, I think, Metropolis. And uh, and here Scanline used, used a really, really, has a really, really impressive pipeline. And here um, the Scorsese movie Hugo, which also won the visual effects um, uh, Academy Award. And uh, where also kind of an old town like Paris uh, has been uh, generated, where they really generated the buildings. So how does this work in City Engine? Um, here you can see uh, such a procedural asset. So this is a, a, a building, a procedural building. Uh, this has Manian style in Paris. And you can see how you can go and change uh, for example, the heights, the roof types, and uh, in this example, you can even change the age of the building. So here now, uh, uh, 1600, or you can make it modern, uh, which doesn't look so nice anymore. Or um, yeah, here another another one. And you also could see at the beginning that there are different levels of detail. This is one of the examples you actually can play with and, and try out. So, oh yeah, another example, a recent one um, where they actually really used um, generated assets is uh, The Witcher, um, the Netflix series. And uh, here you can see the making of, um, this is done by Framestore. And uh, you can see here now in the middle, there are the, um, the hero buildings and now come the city engine buildings come, come down here from the top. <laughs> And uh, yes, so you can see it's a really nice um, model. Then um, the other approach of working with CD Engine is actually that they distribute or um, assemble parts. 
Um, so what do I mean with this? So here you can see. Um, this is Maze Runner 3 um, by Veta, and you can see this um, city here. So what they did, they used CD Engine for the layouting, but then they basically just distributed instances of buildings. You can actually see some of the, the buildings are sometimes the same. So you can see it there that there's instancing of buildings. And uh, this is a really uh, an, uh, a workflow uh, which is also well supported. And uh, again, for that we have an example, so uh, which you can just download and try out. It's called Instant City, and you can see here on the left the different building assets, and then um, how they have been distributed here. So this is actually just a, a very simple rule to distribute them, and you can play around with it. And here you can see um, this is kind of the same street layout as in Maze Runner. It's this kind of radial street network um, yeah, with just, I think, 30 instances uh, of buildings. Uh, but you can also see and you can basically do uh, yeah, all kinds of funny things. So here, for example, the buildings are along a street. So and then when you change the street, uh, the buildings follow. Or here, another example um, where I created a mesh in Maya and just then basically use this mesh as ground to create uh, such kind of a, of a city um, there. This is all basically done in minutes and very simple, but of course you can um, uh, yeah, bring this much more to the next level. And related to this is, um, that's one of the big new things of CD Engine, uh, is that we support now PBR rendering in the viewport. This is, a, of course, especially when you work with instances, um, you can actually really see it um, yeah, as as you should <laughs> in the in the preview of CD Engine. Um, so um, what you saw before was the distribution of whole buildings of pre-modeled buildings. But what's also possible is basically just to have components, and this is for example in Zootopia, they use these kind of components and then wrote rules to put these to put these components together. And as you can see here, it looks looks pretty interesting. And here, for example, you cannot see any more repetitions. Um, so this is really amazing work uh, done by uh, Disney Animation Studios. So this was basically the two things. Like, so what you really can do well in City Engine is you can create a city plan and then you can distribute um, urban assets. However, the question is always like, yeah, how do I integrate it in with a pipeline? And here we have actually many new things. And one of the biggest, yeah, improvements of City Engine is the addition of USD as a format. And USD is really um, a format which is. Uh, has been made for CD Engine, basically. <laughs> it's really a format that can work with millions of instances and really huge polygon counts. So what you see here is a, a, a CD Engine city um, imported into Houdini via USD. And if you want, you can really have um, the whole um, scene graph in uh, USD and go and select everything. And the whole instancing and everything is basically done right for you and comes across, even including the PBR materials. Um, so yeah, and more basically, yeah, more and more production pipelines switch to USD. So, and yeah, this is, uh, this is the new format we support. And that's actually, I think this is, the main, our, will be our main pipeline for USD. We are also working on uh, USD import so that the, also the assets can be USD. So this is coming soon. Then um, what's more and more important is also real-time, real-time productions. So um, therefore we support Unreal Engine with their format Datasmith. They have been one of the first adapters and uh, and here you can see a, a little example. I mean, like, 
Unreal is uh, has is recently, of course, a lot in the news because of uh, the virtual productions, and uh, but also it's also very good for previous and uh, and of course for game production. Um, you can see here how how the how this model you you just saw um, of a Brazilian favela it gets imported, and here you see the actual import already. And now there's some scene dressing going on there. Another bigger city in the background got added, and uh, and then yeah, quite quickly you have uh, basically yeah um, imported and created um, such a virtual um, city. And here you can see some renderings. So and last but not least, would we also push more and more now and are also happy to announce is that we are have uh, more city engine plugins so means you can have city engine in these tools uh, Houdini Maya Unreal and we also have a Python module what does it mean it means it's the asset generation part of city engine is not the city layout part um, so that means um, you can create buildings um, here, for example, in the Maya plugin. Where you can see the same building as, as seen before in CD Engine. So basically, what we create in CD Engine is this so-called rule package, and then we take this over to, um, to in this case, for example, Maya, uh, and then we can use this procedural asset and do the exact same changes. So here, for example, I'm changing the age again. I'm going to 1600. Now I'm going to modern and back to 1900. And you see is uh, the same experience. However, of course, the difference is that the artist does um, can stay in his favorite tool. And this is also a typical setup, which we see is that there's um, a CD engine expert working on the rules and mm, working on the layout. And then um, the dressing comes afterwards, kind of the manual tweaking um, is then in other tools. And yeah, for that we have, for these kind of pipelines, we have the, um, these, uh, these plugins. So to summarize my quick presentation, um, so CD Engine is really, I think it's, it's a really unique tool set regarding um, street networks, uh, in GIS import, GIS export. Um, we really support, because we are part of S3, we really support many um, geographic information formats. And uh, yeah, and you can make use of GIS data and bring it to the world of 3D, which is still kind of not the same. Um, then um, it's a pretty uh, flexible procedural city assets generation uh, suite. So you can be fully procedural or you can be kind of semi-procedural where you have pre-modeled parts and you just assemble them. And last but not least, it's um, the integration thanks to USD and Datasmith into production pipelines is uh, became really simple and efficient. And uh, also you can customize everything you saw here uh, using um, Python, um, so we are really flexible on, on this kind of thing. So if you are interested, what you saw, uh, then please contact us and uh, and we have a, a free trial, so evaluate it. Uh, you can see here um, our email addresses. We would be very happy to uh, answer your questions. Thank you.